Welcome to ATCM, the emergency medicine channel. Yeah. A 70 year old man came to the ER with complaints of sudden onset breathlessness. On ten in, an initial 10 second assessment, uh, airway was patent, patient was saying his name, mm -hmm. uh, breathing wise, respiratory rate of 36 per minute, a saturation of 84% with 15 liters of oxygen. Uh, at that time, we auscultated the chest, uh, left sided air entry was absent. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we uh, took the point of care ultrasound mm -hmm. and uh, on examination, left-sided lung sighting was absent, mm -hmm. and on M mode, uh, we had the barcode sign. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in, in view of uh, pneumothorax, we in, uh, asked for a chest X-ray mm -hmm. and also arranged for a uh, ICD tube insertion. Mm -hmm. uh, meanwhile, uh, circulation was BP was uh, 140 by 90 with a pulse rate of 139 per minute. Uh, GCS was E4 V5 M6, both uh, pupils bilaterally equally reactive. Uh, p uh, exposure was temperature was uh, patient was afebrile. Uh, we also took a point of care ABG, ABG is showing a pH of 7.124 uh -huh. with PCO2 of 61.7, uh, PO2 of 72.9 and bicarbonate of 19.4, uh -huh. lactate was 10. Lactate 10? 10, 10 sir. Uh -huh. uh, uh, patient was very… Uh, okay, so tachypnic. yeah, okay. Uh, Sir, uh, ECG showed sinus tachycardia with a heart rate of 139. Uh -huh. Uh, sir, uh, we took the X-ray. X-ray showed okay. left so, side. So let's wait there. Yes, so you have this patient, elderly gentleman, mm -hmm. with sudden onset uh, breathing yes, difficulty. Yes, Your airway was patent. Circulation, you told me that the BP is fine, yes, but on auscultation, you felt there is uh, a decreased yes, air entry, yes, and you you did an ultrasound, and you felt that you told about two things there. One is uh, you are uh, lung sliding yes, is absent. absent. So what is lung sliding? So with the visceral uh, and the uh, parietal pleura movement, we can see. Uh, when we uh, put the probe okay. between the two ribs. Okay, so that is lung sliding, it was absent. Yes, so basically you feel it is pneumothorax. Yes. Along with that, you told one more thing, what, what is that? The barcode sign so on. what uh, is the normal finding okay. called as? So that is no seashore sign. Okay, so absence of seashore sign, but barcode sign is present. That's. Yes. Now what are the two other findings which which is usually seen in pneumothorax in ultrasound, other than these two? So, uh, uh, lung point. Yeah. What is comet, comet artifact or reverberation yeah. artifact? So basically, once you do a uh, mm -hmm. uh, ultrasound in a normal lung, between the because of the plural uh, thing, you will get an artifact. Mm -hmm. So basically, it's also called as comet sign. Yes. So in a serially, you can see throughout mm -hmm. the lung. So if there is a pneumothorax, this comet sign or reverberation artifact is not present. So that is the third thing. Fourth is a lung point. Lung point is, it is not that every time you will get the lung point. What is lung point? So if you track it down, there will be a certain area where there is pneumothorax. Yes. So there, there is definitely there is no... Uh, 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 their uh, sliding sign won't, won't be there. But as we move the prop, you will reach a point where there is a normal lung. Yes. So that point where the uh, your uh, lung sliding is absent and present. Mm. So that exact That's area is called as uh, lung, uh, lung point. So these are the four things which is ideally needed to rule in or roll out pneumothorax. Okay. So you felt that there is a pneumothorax. But at the same time, you, you are also saying that the patient is hemodynamically stable. So uh, you took a decision not to intervene at that point, but definitely go ahead with an X-ray. Okay, fair enough. Right. Uh, yes, uh, X ray we took, uh, X ray showed left sided pneumothorax. Okay. okay so, uh, so uh, at that time, sir, uh, we uh, decided to put a, a ICD tube. Mm -hmm. So we positioned the patient. Okay. Uh, why why uh, you decided to put an ICD uh, tube? Sir, what was the size of the. Uh, sir, it was a large pneumothorax, like a uh, full, uh, the lung, uh, the left sided lung was entirely collapsed. Uh, there was uh, more than two centimeters um, at the apex. Okay, uh, more, uh, the apex. okay. that is one, one additional information you will mm. usually get. No, mm. because uh, traditionally always pneumothorax ICD was the uh, no, but there is a small subgroup of patients where you may be able to manage without an ICD. Yes. So that is a stable patient with a very small pneumothorax of less than two centimeter at the high, at the high level, mm. and the patient is not tachypneic, yeah. uh, hemodynamically stable, yes. saturation yes. is maintained. Yes. So that will be one small subgroup where probably you might be able to manage conservatively without aspiration or ICD or uh, or epic tail. Mm. Okay, but here definitely it is a larger one. That is also the one place where uh, your X-ray is going to help. Like uh, you, uh, ultrasound, you can never get the uh, distance measured. Okay, so this will be one, one area, fine. So since the patient was stable, you entered an X-ray and to, uh, documented a pneumothorax and then you plan for ICD. Okay, fair enough. Uh, so we so positioned the patient for ICD insertion. Okay. Uh, we uh, put the uh, position in the 60 degree position uh -huh. uh, uh, with the uh, left side hand behind the head. Okay. Uh, we uh, clean the area. Uh -huh. uh, the ideal position to place uh, ICD is uh, in the fifth uh, intercostal space on Good. the anterior axillary line. 
So, uh, sir, we uh, cleaned and draped the area, right. and then, uh, sir, we gave incision okay. around three to five centimeters with the, the ten size uh, scalpel, mm -hmm. um, blade marker knife, and mm -hmm. then, sir, uh, with that, with the uh, artery uh, clamp, mm -hmm. we. Um, um, Dissected the muscle okay. and we entered. And uh, once we entered, we uh, opened the um, artery forcep and mm -hmm. the gush of air was there. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, what's the anatomical landmark? It will? Sir, uh, fifth intercostal space in the anterior axillary line. Right. Hmm. Uh, sir, uh, after that, uh, the gush of air, we uh, tried to put one finger inside. Okay. And at the same time, uh, we clamped the ICD tube. We took a 24 size ICD uh, tube. We clamped it with a curved artery forcep, uh, clamped it, and while the finger was inside, we tried to uh, push it in, mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, so we inserted with the uh, trocar. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, so we inserted. Uh, so, uh, uh, we yeah. pushed it in, and we inserted mm -hmm. with the uh, trocar. And the last eye was inside, okay. and uh, connected to a water seal. Okay. Uh, so just after so the, here you used a trocar. Yes, right? So that is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So basically, there are two methods, right? One is with the trocar, or with the complete like blood dissection. Mm -hmm. You go. Ahead. You told you put a twenty-four yes. French. Yes. Tube. So, how is that decided? Like, is, is there an option for 24? Is like moderate. You can put a probably a, a 14 one or a 24 one or a 28 one. So, these are the usual options which which are there. So, if it is a very small pneumothorax, probably a small pigtail or a 14 French should be okay. If it is moderate and you feel it, you need something for a longer thing, then definitely 24 is an okay kind of effort. But if the patient has hemoneumothorax and things like that, you always go for a little more higher. That is a 28 French. Okay. And also, if you are if you are feeling that it might be uh, there for a longer period of time and all, it's always a longer. Uh, I mean, a, a larger size is preferred. Okay. Fine. So you put a 28 French uh, here with a trocar. There you can you could have also like an option of without a trocar with a complete dissection is also available. Okay. So you place it then. So connected it to the water uh, water seal. Okay. What is under water seal? Uh, so the tube is put. Uh, uh, the uh, the tube is put in uh, like water. Uh -huh. uh, like before uh, the before we uh, uh, connect the tube, we already put it in a water seal so okay. that air that only comes out. There is uh -huh. no air from outside that will enter into Fair the enough. chest. Fair okay. So after that, the, uh, the movement of air column was there. Sir. Okay. So we confirmed it is in position. We also Good. take a uh, repeat X-ray. It okay. showed there was complete resolution. That the lung expanded completely. Okay. After the insertion of the ICD. Okay. So uh, patient stabilized immediately patient after that, no? Yes. Okay. And then? Uh, so, so uh, then uh, coming to uh, sample history. Okay. Uh, so, uh, point of, uh, like CBC CRP point of care also we had taken. Okay. So, um, there were no infective markers. Total count was 7000 with a CRP of 2.1. Okay. Hemoglobin of 10.8. Okay. Uh, so, sample history. Uh, patient came with uh, complaints of sudden onset breathing difficulty, which started just 20 minutes back. There mm -hmm. was no history of any fever, cough. Nothing. Just 20 minutes of sudden onset breathing difficulty. Mm -hmm. uh, he was not allergic to any known medications. Mm -hmm. He is a known case of polymyositis and is on uh, mycophenolate mofetil. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a chronic smoker and previous history of CVA was there. Uh, on uh, the last meal was taken 30 minutes back. Uh, Events leading to uh, the uh, mm. current scenario, patient mm -hmm. was uh, patient came with sudden onset breathing difficulty after lunch, which was severe and gradually progressive. No history of fever, cough, palpitations, chest pain. So, uh, uh, on the examination of uh, uh, basically, what are the eleven history in a spontaneous pneumothorax? Mm. Here we are, we are talking about a yeah. spontaneous mm. pneumothorax, mm. probably secondary pneumothorax. No, Sorry. right. So, what are the Sorry. other eleven mm. histories you need to take? Mm. So, uh, we uh, need to ask about uh, like uh, n the known case of what uh, what is the patient uh, like any previous lung uh, conditions Good. is having or not any previous history of pneumothorax is Good. there or not uh, sir any history of whether uh, flight like any uh, uh, flying history Excellent. or any diving history was uh, there Good. or not and then we have to look at the stature of the patient uh, like uh, primary spontaneous pneumothorax is more common in patients with lean uh, stature uh, any connective tissue disorder history? Uh, lean stage of what exactly? We are so Marfan, uh, more towards Marfan's Marfan yeah. syndrome, okay. Ehlers Danlos syndrome. Mm -hmm. uh, other than that, sir, uh, any uh, infection, any pneumonia, current uh, uh, infection, or any uh, pre previous ex pre existing COPD or asthma patients mm -hmm. can also have uh, rupture of bullet. Other thing will be, I mean, not in this patient, mm -hmm. but otherwise, young people coming with spontaneous pneumothorax, cocaine, uh, sniffing, so sniffing uh, snorting, those kind of snorting yes, kind of things also needs to be looked at. Okay. History wise, that's it. Mm -hmm. uh, examination, you didn't find any change in body habitus or anything. Mm -hmm. um, COPD is also not established, but a smoker. A smoker, he was a smoker. Okay, fine.
After admission, uh, one CT was taken, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, CT showed a multiple large paraseptal emphysematous bullae of varying size seen in both lung parenchyma mm -hmm. with the left uh, upper uh, lobe pneumothorax seen secondary to rupture of bullae. Okay. So, it was more like a spontaneous yeah. bullae rupture in a patient with uh, pre existing uh, COPD changes. Okay, fine. Then, sir, what do you want to tell more? <laughs> Uh, sir, uh, basically a pneumothorax can be sir, either due to trauma, uh, traumatic pneumothorax or it could be spontaneous pneumothorax. Okay. Uh, traumatic pneumothorax will be any penetrating injury to the uh, rip, uh, to the thoracic cavity mm -hmm. and spontaneous pneumothorax can be primary and secondary. Right. Primary pneumothorax, if the patient is not having any pre-existing lung conditions, then if patient has pneumothorax, we uh, classify it as primary, okay. especially in tall and lean patients and patients right. uh, having cigarette smoking, snorting right. uh, of marijuana. Uh, and then uh, sir, secondary pneumothorax, uh, more common in patients with cystic fibrosis, COPD, uh, patients having pneumo, uh, infections like pneumocystis zero vesai or TB well, infection hmm. or patients having interstitial lung disease, sarcoidosis uh, or uh, uh, connective tissue disorders like Marfan's, okay. Ehlers Danlos or any patient having primary lung cancer okay. uh, or uh, so there is another uh, special type of pneumothorax which is uh, due to thoracic endometriosis which can, uh, occurs in females, right. the catamidal pneumothorax. Right. Uh, other than that, sir, we can have uh, tension pneumothorax in trauma patients. Okay. Uh, tension pneumothorax uh, will usually need immediate decompression using a needle uh, thyro needle needle decompression uh, okay. followed by an ICD uh, tube insertion. Okay. So, and that, uh, sir, um, uh, clinically stable, how do we determine if a patient is clinically stable okay. uh, in a patient who is having pneumothorax? Okay. So the criteria is the respiratory rate has to be less than 24 per minute okay. with a heart rate of either more than 60 or less than 120, mm -hmm. BP normal, mm -hmm. saturation more than 90 mm -hmm. and the patient is able to speak complete sentence. Mm -hmm. uh, this is an, uh, age is also there, no? Age less than 60 is also there in that criteria. Okay. Okay. So, and then uh, coming to the size of uh, pneumothorax, sir, mm -hmm. uh, we consider a pneumothorax as large mm -hmm. if uh, the visible rim is more than 2 cm between the lung margin and the chest wall at the level of the hilum. Okay. Then, uh, sir, management of spontaneous pneumothorax. Okay. Sir, um, Spontaneous pneumothorax, if it is bilaterally, uh, bilateral pneumothorax or mm -hmm. the patient is hemodynamically unstable to mm -hmm. proceed, uh, we have to immediately proceed to put ICD tube. Uh, if it's not there, in the, if the age is more than 50 and there is uh, evidence of underlying lung disease, mm -hmm. uh, then uh, if, if there is an underlying uh, evidence of lung disease, then we have to consider the secondary pneumothorax. Okay. If it is more than 2 cm or the patient is severely tachypneic, then we will directly go for chest strain insertion. If patient is uh, the, the size is less than 2 cm mm -hmm. uh, like 1 to 2 cm then we can also consider can, uh, aspirating with a 16 to 18 gauge cannula right. if the size is even less than that then we had admit the patient and we start on high flow oxygen okay. till it uh, resolves mm -hmm. uh, and if uh, there is uh, no uh, if it's a primary no. pneumothorax here uh, i mean uh, don't i mean we, we do give oxygen but no. remember that hfnc per se is not something uh, yeah. which is yes, preferred yes, okay yes. so here you are going to give through your nasal, nasal cannula, cannula only hmm? what's the problem with hfnc and nav in pneumothorax so it will worsen the condition basically like we are creating positive an artificial pressure. positive pressure so yes. that's why nav is also kind of uh, contraindicated and mm -hmm. even hfnc is contraindicated mm -hmm. okay thanks Sir, if it's a primary pneumothorax and the size is more than 2 cm or the patient is breathless, mm -hmm. uh, then we have to uh, directly go with either uh, ICD or aspiration cannula. Mm -hmm. And if it's not there, then we can uh, consider the patient, uh, we consider the patient for discharge after observing for 6 hours in the ED. Mm -hmm. We're taking a repeat chest x-ray if uh, there is no worsening mm -hmm. and uh, review the patient back in 48 hours. Okay. If it is unstable, you... Ah, directly. Uh, okay. okay. Anything else? Sir, uh, no, such, uh, like a recurrent uh, pneumothorax history, if then we can opt for surgical pleurodesis. Mm -hmm. uh, so, a few more things. So, basically, we told that if if, if a pneumothorax is there, from an ER perspective, why we need to uh, uh, understand? Because if the pneumothorax is there, and if we go ahead without treating the pneumothorax into intubation or a navy, then again things are going to be worse. Yes, so, that is one one important thing of recognizing it upfront. Yes. The next thing is like we have put an ICD. 
but then uh, there could be uh, difficulties in getting it out yes. okay so that is where you need a definitive kind of management so most of the time the icd is one the uh, resolution of the pneumothorax is there we go ahead and remove the icd but in situations like this then bulle or anything is like that definitely a definitive treatment is needed most of the time it is vats video assisted thoracoscopy yes. so you go ahead and uh, uh, do a definitive management mm -hmm. certain other kind of spontaneous pneumothorax the option would be a chemical yeah. pleurodesis chemical. Okay, yeah. so basically you thoracoscopically you inject uh, okay. talc or yeah. an irritant so that the both the pleura are kind yeah. of uh, stuck together. Yeah. Then there is this entity called as iatrogenic pneumothorax, yeah. where it, it follows uh, yeah. the procedures. Yeah. Okay, uh, basically you yeah. go ahead with a uh, CT, uh, yeah. some kind of aspiration or yeah. biopsy. Yeah. And there is a newer thing which is uh, kind of uh, showing a lot of interest is uh, what you call as salo. I mean, you take the patient's own blood and create a blood patch. So close to 100 ml of blood is taken from the patient and it is injected into the pneumothorax, pneumothorax site where it seals off the pneumothorax. It is called as blood patch in iatrogenic uh, pneumothoraxes. That is also something which is being tried out. And uh, what is the usual complication will be? BPF, if there is a bronchial pleural fistula, that will be one thing which we need to be aware of because uh, you put in a tube and there will be a continuous air leak. Mm -hmm. So that will be one challenge which we need to be always aware of in spontaneous mm -hmm. pneumothorax. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, then that, uh, I think we covered most of the thing. But say the patient is uh, very tachypneic, uh, hemodynamically unstable, uh, you feel that intubation is also needed. Mm -hmm. So what will you do first, intubate or put a tube? Intubate and uh, drain and then... It's, it's, uh, it's always yeah. always yeah. advisable. Yeah. If it's a cardiac arrest kind of end of scenario, we we might be uh, it, it, it's a difficult question to answer. But always before intubation, the putting in the ICD also is an equal priority in that kind of situation. Okay, and yeah, I think we covered most of it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Sir.